Here's part three. This is going to be a quick one because we're going to talk a lot more about normal distributions in later chapters, but one of the most useful mathematical models in statistics is the normal distribution. This is the idea of the bell curve, which you may have heard of uh, in other courses or just in your life. Um, it's the idea that most data, most uh, numerical measurements that you would take uh, occur towards a middle value. and extreme values in either direction occur less frequently. So this is, this is a very common shape you would see in nature. Picture me measuring the height of a large group of people or the IQ or the weight or something. Most people are going to float around the middle and it's going to be rare to find extremes at the high end or low end. So it's a bell-shaped curve. It's the bell curve. Um, and it models the distribution of continuous data. Or if you have discrete data, which is countable, if you have a large sample, we can use uh, a bell curve, a normal distribution as a mathematical model as well, but we're going to talk about this in chapter five. The area contained beneath the normal distribution represents the proportion of data or the probability of finding data in a given range of values. All right, so for example, the proportion of data above zero, so if this is my distribution, zero is right in the middle. If I shaded this curve, if I started shading, uh, this half of the curve, right, that would represent 50%, since it represents exactly half of the area under the curve. So if I start shading areas under this curve, that represents the proportion of data within a given range. Uh, the horizontal axis here, you've got zero in the middle and then you count by ones. These are something we call Z scores or standardized scores. So if you ever heard of a standardized test like the SAT, uh, this is what they're doing is they're standardizing by putting a central value right in the middle and they're counting by uh, a certain unit. So we call these Z scores. Okay. So zero on the Z axis is exactly equal to the mean. The mean is right in the middle. The median's right in the middle. The mode's right in the middle. When you have perfect symmetry, the mean, median, mode all line up right at zero. So if you had a Z score of zero, that means you're perfectly average. All right. Uh, a z-score of 2, for example, is two standard deviations above the mean. So if you had a z-score of 2, you're right here. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, that would mean that you're uh, above average. You're two standard deviations above average. All right. So the units here are number of standard deviations, typical deviations from the mean. Uh, and if you had a z-score of negative 1, if you have a negative z-score, that tells us you're below average. All right, so you're one standard deviation below the mean. When we convert data to z-scores, we are standardizing. Here's how you do it. You take the value, okay, which is a specific individual score, you subtract the mean. So you find out how far is it from the mean, value minus mean, and then you divide by the standard deviation to find out how many standard deviations go into that difference. Okay, so value minus mean divided by standard deviation, that gives you a z-score, and that puts you somewhere along this scale. Most data will be between negative one and one. Okay, that'll uh, it will be most data. It'll be, it'll be about sixty-eight percent of data falls between negative one and one. Uh, and once you get outside there, it's it's more and more rare. If you're above, if your Z score is above two or below negative two, it's an unusual score. That's the term we use. So if my IQ is two point five on the Z score, that means that I have an unusually high IQ, which of course is true. Here's what I was talking about a second ago. This is a rule of thumb. Uh, it's good for doing quick estimates of the percentages of data within a certain range. So when you have a bell curve, a normal distribution, about 68%, which is a large majority of data, are within one standard deviation of the mean. So between negative 1 and 1 on this scale here of z-scores, 95% of the data, most of the data, is within two standard deviations of the mean. So that's the middle 95%, which is why I said if you're above two or below negative two, that would be unusual because you're in the upper two and a half percent or the lower two and a half percent that give you that remaining 5% outside of this middle 95. Uh, and then if you go three standard deviations away from the mean in each direction, that captures about 99.7% of the data, three standard deviations. All right, so it's very, very rare 
to have a z-score higher than three or lower than negative three. You're really, really out there, but it is possible. Let's do a quick exercise. So I'm gonna look at my notes again. And I've got two of them open, so I'm gonna close one of them. And let's see here, they should ask me a question. Exercise 2.3. So let me copy this and paste this into that other document we were working on. Okay, the scores on a college entrance exam, similar to the SAT maybe, have an approximately normal distribution with a mean equal to 52 and a standard deviation equal to 11. About 68% of the Y values, and I'm not going to call them Y values, I'm going to call them uh, scores, lie between what two values? All right, these values are blank and blank. The Z scores are blank and blank. All right, so 68%, remember looking at what we were just looking at, the uh, percentiles here. 68% of the data are between negative 1 and 1 on that axis. So those are the z-scores. I'm going to answer the second question first. Negative 1 and 1. Okay? And those values would be, what this negative 1 represents is it's negative 1 standard deviations. So it's one standard deviation below 0, which is the mean. So what I what I need to do is take find out what's one standard deviation, 11, below the mean. Okay? So 11 below the mean. So 52 minus 11. What's 52 minus 11? Is that 41? So I'm going to say 41, and so that's the uh, that's the lower boundary, and positive one on the z-score scale. One standard deviation ab above the mean is take 11 and add it to the mean, 63. So you might have noticed what I did. I subtracted 11 and I added 11 to the mean. Okay, so 68% of the scores on this entrance exam, 68% of students score between a 41 and a 63 based on the fact that it's approximately normal. So it's symmetric, it's bell-shaped, it's the bell curve. Uh, and the standard deviation is 11. The average difference from the mean is 11. The mean is 52. So all you have to do is subtract 11 and add 11 to the mean, and that gives you one standard deviation below and above. And that's the middle 68%. So if, if you're a college enrollment uh, officer and you look at this these numbers, you can quickly come up with boundaries of the middle 68%, a majority. Now, what if you want to know 95%, right? So that, remember, was two standard deviations below and two standard deviations above. That captures the middle 95%. So if I want to know what's the middle 95% of scores here, the Z scores are negative 2 and 2 negative 2 and positive 2. And what I need to do here is subtract 11 twice and add 11 twice. Okay, so twice 11 is 22. So I'm going to subtract 22. That gives me 30. And I'm going to add 22. That gives me 74. All right, so the rule of thumb tells me about 95% of the students' scores lie between these two values. Okay, lie between 30 and 74. So 95% of the students at this college are scoring between the 30 and a 74 on this entrance exam. Uh, and then the last one, 99.7% of the scores are between what two values? So 99.7 is that last boundary here. 99.7 is three standard deviations below, minus three to plus three. So those are the z-scores, minus 3 to positive 3. So what I have to do is subtract 3 times 11 and add 3 times 11, so 33. So subtract 33, what's 52 minus 33? Let's see, 52 minus 33, 19. I could have done that in my head, but why not use some technology? And then add 33. 
So what does that give you? 85 additions a little bit easier, but don't, uh, don't be overconfident. Use a calculator if you're not sure. So 99.7, almost 100% of the students are scoring between a 19 and an 85. And you can use those numbers to kind of make uh, decisions or draw conclusions. All right, But that's, that's what this rule of thumb says. It's pretty easy to use. If you know the standard deviation, you know the mean, you just add and subtract one, two, or three times the standard deviation to the mean. And that gives you these intervals that capture the middle 68% the middle 95% and the middle 99.7%. We'll get a, a little more nuanced in future chapters where what if we want to know the middle 20%, right? Or some percent that's not one of these three famous numbers from the empirical rule. If you want to know something other than 68, 95, 99.7, uh, you've got to use some other technology and some other methods. And we'll learn those soon.